Okay, let's talk about the AccuPlacer Next Generation AAF Math Placement Exam. And the AAF stands for Advanced Algebra and Functions. And if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take the AccuPlacer. So you're probably been told by your college, you're going to be taking this test to see where you place into uh, what math class essentially or math level you're going to be placing into. So if you're going to be taking the AAF specifically, probably is an indicator that you have a pretty good math background already because this is generally the highest level AccuPlacer there is currently. So this next generation AccuPlacer is a replacement for the older AccuPlacer exams like the college level math, etc. But um, nevertheless, you know, the AccuPlacer is a very uh, popular math placement uh, test. There's others out there as well, but the long and the short of it is that, hey, when you go into a college, you're going to, um, you know, have to take placement exams to see, what, you know, what what's the best level you kind of qualify for for your current skills and potential. So anyways, um, what we're going to do in this video is take a look at a practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty easily if you're fully prepared for the AccuPlacer Next Generation AAF exam, but we'll get to that problem here in a second. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed many online math courses to include an AccuPlacer Next Generation uh, AAF uh, test prep course. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video, but all my uh, courses are, are very comprehensive, take me, and they've taken me a long time to build. This particular one has been very, very effective. So uh, if you want to check that out, again, I'm going to leave the link uh, in the description of this video. But with that being said, let's get to this problem. Now, the way I like to uh, kind of do these videos is, one, first tell you what the problem is. Then for those of you out there um, that think you can do it, you should just try the problem without you know, watching me do the problem, okay? But if you need a little bit of a hint, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a hint, and then of course I'm gonna solve the problem. So if you don't wanna hear the hint, go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so let's get to this hint, all right? So first of all, what is the problem? Well, actually, let me tell you what the problem is. So here I have some powers going on, I have different bases and whatnot. What I want you to do is to simplify, so really, I should be more clear about this. What is the problem? So I want you to simplify this expression, okay? So this would be, think of it in math, if you have like, let's say you had 10 over 30 times the square root of 25, right? Would we uh, leave our final answer like this? No, we wouldn't, right? You want to simplify things. So 10 over 30 is the same thing as 1 third, and then the square root of 25, um, is positive, negative 5, uh, and you can kind of get the idea, right? We don't like to leave things in a non-simplified manner. But in mathematics, okay, um, can be a little bit deceiving when you look at something like this. We don't, there's things we can do. We can, we have x's and y's and exponents, so you can combine this in, into a much more uh, simpler form. So that's what I want you to do, is I want you to simplify this uh, to its fullest extent possible. Okay, so now here comes the hint. All right, so the hint is, well, what's going on? Well, we have um, powers and exponents, so you need to recall the rules of powers and exponents, okay? So things like if I have x squared to the third power, what is the, what is, what is the rule here? Well, the rule is I just multiply this outer exponent to this inner exponent. So this is x to the six, for example, okay? Um, now, what if I had x squared times x, whoops, uh, x to the fifth power, okay? And what do I do there? Well, because the bases are the same, I can add the exponent. So this is x to the seventh. Now, you're gonna need to know these rules and uh, additional rules, okay? All these rules are very, very important in algebra, but the the hint that I'm kind of driving at here is these rules is what, are what you're going to have basically have to keep in mind as you manage this problem. Now, there isn't any one particular 
uh, right set of steps to do this problem. As long as you're doing um, things that are correct, you can. You, everybody will eventually get to the right answer. All right. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and solve this now using these rules and other rules. But again, if you forgot the rules, <clears throat> excuse me, um, don't panic. But you're going to have to, you know, brush up on on these, uh, you know, the rules of uh, powers and exponents. Extremely, extremely important because in uh, algebra, okay, you're oftentimes dealing with things with exponents. Very common. You got to know how to deal with them. Okay, so let's get to it. All right, so I have a fraction, and I'm multiplying by this term here. This term over here. Don't let this fake you out. And you're like, well, it's not a fraction. Well, you can always write anything as a fraction. You just put over one. Okay, so I have a fraction times another fraction. So how do I deal with that? Well, if I had two fifths times, no, oh, let's say three over um, uh, four. So if I'm multiplying fractions, what do I do? I, I multiply the, the respective numerators and denominators. So this would be the same thing as 6 over 20. Of course, we can simplify, but the point is here that we're going to want to multiply across. But before we do that, uh, well, let me just finish my uh, thought here. So we're going to be wanting to multiply across because this is uh, the division of fractions. But before we do that, we can go ahead and start simplifying uh, the individual numerators and denominators. So let's get those as uh, simplified as possible, and then we'll go ahead and just start taking some steps to to kind of whittle this down into its most simplest form. All right, so let's go ahead and start with this, okay? The numerator on this particular fraction. So I can distribute this negative 1 to these exponents. So that's going to give me x to the negative 2, and then this is y to the negative 3 times negative 1, right? Because I'm using a distributor property. So that will be y to the third power positive, okay? So now let's go ahead and work on this guy. I got this fourth uh, power to the outside of these. Now inside, or you just see x or y, but those are both basically x to the first and y to the first. So I can just distribute that four in like so. Uh, x to the fourth and y to the fourth. And now let's go ahead and work on this a little bit. Now again, this is what I was going to say is you can continue to try to simplify this fraction and then work over here. But um, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of do it in this particular approach. Now here is a question for you. x to the zero power, what is that equal to? All right, so hopefully you remember that anything to the zero power is one. Doesn't make a difference what you have. You could have pi to the zero power, it's one. So anything to the zero power is one. So this is one, and I'm just left with y to the negative two then, because this is just going to be one times y to the negative two. We don't need to write that one, and then we'll have this one like so. All right, so at this time, we can go ahead and there's different approaches here. You can, we can continue to simplify this fraction, or maybe we could just go ahead and just multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to take this numerator, I'm going to multiply it by this numerator. So that will be x to the negative 2 power times y cubed times y to the negative 2 over, now let's go ahead and multiply the denominators. That's easy, x to the fourth, y to the fourth times one, so that'd just be x to the fourth, y to the fourth. Okay, so what do I do now? Well, here, because I have in the numerator, I have uh, two y's, it's the same base, I can add the exponents. So this will be x to the negative two power, so three plus negative two is going to be one, so that's just y. And now I have x to the fourth, y to the fourth. Okay, that's where I'm at right now. Okay, so hopefully, and kind of let's put a little one here just to make that clear. Three plus negative two is one. Okay, so we're almost there. Okay, now let's deal with the y's and we'll leave the x's uh, for the last. Okay, so here I have a y. One y, and I have four y's. Let's go ahead and just expand this a little bit. So I have x to the negative 2 times a y over 
x to the fourth power times y to the fourth, which is the same thing as y times y times y times y. So I can cross cancel one factor. So I'm left with x, whoops, x to the negative two power over x to the fourth y cubed because one of these y's I was able to cross cancel, okay? Now, I am taking oh, somewhat, I don't want to say shortcuts here. I, I'm taking shortcuts in the explanation of this for sure because, you know, it's hard for me to, to be teaching all these properties you need to know, um, you know, as we're doing the problem. Okay, I'm trying to give you, obviously, um, a quick explanation of what's going on. But if you're lost here, okay, don't panic. Just make a mental note of what you have to do. All right, so the last thing we have to deal with is we have this x negative 2 and x to the 4th because you, you both have, between these two um, powers, they have the same base. So how do we deal with that? Well, the best way, well, I would say the best way, you have two options here. You can use the division powers of exponent, which is a to the m over a to the n, and that's equal to a to the m minus n. That is the, the rule. In other words, I can subtract this 4 from uh, this negative 2 minus 4, but I'm not going to go that route. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x negative 2 and put it down stairs next to this x to the 4th. And I could do that by simply just moving the power down in the denominator. And when I do that, this negative 2 goes away. Now, the reason why I did, uh, I made this move let me go ahead and finish writing the whole thing. So that's going to be, instead of my x to the negative 2 up in the numerator, I'm putting it down in the denominator. Now I have x to the 4th times y cubed. All right, I'm just putting a little multiplication dots just to make clear that this is multiplication. The reason why I did that is because when you're working with powers and exponents, you want to eliminate any negative powers. So this was the, the option that would have done so. Now, again... I'm sure some of you out there, if you're not really clear what's going on, this probably even confused you uh, even more so, okay? Again, you just use this uh, video as feedback, all right? You're going to, this is, I would say, is more like a basic level, an eh, average level problem. So let's go and finish it up, and you can kind of gauge your answer. So now that I have x squared times x to the fourth in the denominator, I can just add the exponent. So this would be 1 over x to the sixth power times y cubed, and that is the final answer. Okay, now if you had something different that has negative exponents, again, you want to eliminate any negative exponents in your expressions, okay? So if you have negative exponents, uh, in the, typically in math, we don't consider that uh, fully simplified, okay? So anyways, that is the answer here. Now, if you got this right, I think that's very, very good, okay? Uh, especially if you remembered all this stuff. Um, you know, that's uh, definitely a good indication that you're pretty strong with powers and exponents. Of course, there's going to be a lot more, you know, uh, problems on the Accuplace or AAF outside of this. If you were lost, don't, don't panic, okay? Um, I'm sure a good amount of people watching this video probably struggle with this or forgot how to do it, right? Maybe that's you. Maybe you're like this. I forgot how to do this, but I do remember, like, I do remember how to do it if I kind of have to relearn it, <laughs> if you will, right? And that's uh, that's typically a typical response from a lot of students. Like, oh, yeah, I remember how to do that. But here's the thing, though. You can't go into the test and be like, oh, I forgot how to do it. I could do it if I remember how to do it because <laughs> the, the key is, you're going to have to study in advance, and you're going to have to cover a lot of different math topics for the Accuplace or AAF exam. So do yourself a favor. Uh, study hard before you take the exam so you can place as high as possible and be ready for any subsequent um, math class that you're going to be taking. So, um, again, just going to remind you that if you like my teaching style, I want to check out uh, my Accuplacer uh, AAF math uh, test prep course. I'm going to leave the link to that in the description of this video. Extremely comprehensive. Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been on YouTube for a good 12 years at the time of this video. So I already have hundreds of uh, videos on my channel that can help you out. And I'm posting stuff 
all the time. So hopefully consider subscribing. If you like the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, what was you know your highest uh, math class in high school? Are you coming? Uh, are you been away from school? Are you coming out of like a career or you know um, how you know? Maybe you've been away from high school for ten years, maybe twenty years, going back to school. But maybe you're just you know going right from high school into college. Um, so let me get some feedback. Do you like math? Do you, do you don't like math? Yeah, what I always like to kind of say is that I would, hmm, a good majority of the people <laughs> out there, I find, do not like math as much. Okay. Uh, some people like don't mind it, but there's a lot of people, probably the majority of people that don't enjoy math, don't like math. If that's you, that's, that's perfectly fine. You shouldn't feel bad about that at all. However, math is just one of those things you're going to have to make peace with because it is everywhere, okay? And if you're going to college, you're going to have to uh, know a certain level of mathematics, and it's going to be a good thing for you because it's going to help strengthen your analytical brain, if you will, okay? So even though you don't like math, doesn't that has nothing to do with your ability to do well in math. And I think what happens is... Um, for those of you that start doing well, maybe you didn't do well in math. You can even if you didn't do well in math before, uh, you can do well, you know, in the future. Okay, so the past doesn't equal the future in terms of your ability um, to learn uh, math. Okay, but as you start being more successful in mathematics, then typically you'll start enjoying it more. But anyways, hopefully this little video uh, will kind of help you get focused on what you need to do on the AccuPlacer. I definitely wish you all the best. Thank you for your time and have a great day.